The history between the Apex Predator Randy Orton and the almighty Bobby Lashley certainly runs deep here on SmackDown. Orton put Lashley on the shelf months ago. Lashley returned just a few weeks back, hell-bent on retribution. On the road to no mercy tonight, it is a massive six-man tag team main event as Lashley teams up alongside Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford of the Street Profits as they take on the Apex Predator Randy Orton and A-Town down under. That is going down right here tonight on Friday Night Smackdown. We are here in the Rogers Arena, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and we are kicking things off with a high stakes, high reward, cruiserweight championship affair. The Irish ace, JD McDonough, has been in hot pursuit of the big strong boy, Tyler Bate, over the last two months, ever since he lost his cruiserweight title back in July at Money in the Bank. What a way to kick things off this evening. And if you want to talk about high stakes and high reward, look no further than the not one, but two queen of the ring first round matches that are coming your way here tonight. The goddess, Alexa Bliss, back in singles competition as she takes on the ballsy badass, Shotzi. Plus, for the first time ever, a TNA knockout is here on SmackDown. Jordan Grace makes her WWE in-ring debut against Indy Hartwell. Both those matches coming up in just a bit here inside Rogers Arena, but the Cruiserweight Championship of the World is on the line to kick things off. You cannot say that JD McDonough is the underdog in this equation. A former champion in his own right, who owns a pinfall victory over Tyler Bate just a few weeks ago in tag team action. Add that on to a victory over Butch the following week, and the Irish Devil has put together Quite the recipe for success in his pursuit of becoming number one contender. But here comes a man and the big strong boy, Tyler Bate, who knows a thing or two about keeping down JD when the championship is on the line. As Tyler Bate approaches the ring, I want to remind you that No Nation Gaming channel memberships are available now. Hit the join button down below or the link up in the cards. Become a No Nation Gaming channel member and punch your golden ticket for the WWE live event that is going down in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada tomorrow night. Featuring superstars from Friday Night SmackDown as well as Monday Night Raw. More info on that event coming up in just a bit. Hit the join button or the link and become a No Nation Gaming channel member. Tyler Bate defending the Cruiserweight Championship here tonight. And what is his second defense of the gold? The first one came to the Bruiserweight Butch last month. Unfortunately, that match went A-wire thanks to some interference from JD McDonough. Dare I say there's some unfinished business between Butch and McDonough, and Tyler Bate has been in the middle of it as he is the rightful holder of the gold. We are going to have a determination on who truly will be sitting at the top of the Cruiserweight division on the other side of this contest. The Cruiserweight Championship is on the line as we kick things off in Vancouver. Let's send things down to Samantha Irvin. Introducing the challenger from Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland. Weighing in at 180 pounds, J.D. McDonough! And his opponent from Dudley, England. WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Tyler Bates! Both of these superstars certainly looking to claim their rightful spot at the top of the Cruiserweight division, especially with the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament kicking off in just mere weeks. I'm sure both of these individuals would love to participate in said tournament. Both were a part of it last year, coming up short. Another opportunity to achieve that accolade at the end of September. But here we are in Rogers Arena, kicking things off on Friday Night Smackdown. And wait a minute here. Well, I believe that is the Bruiserweight Butch who is making his way down the ringside. And I got a feeling he isn't just coming down to get a closer look at the action. Well, you see, JD McDonough has taken his attention to the Bruiserweight. McDonough interfered several weeks ago, cost Butch an opportunity at the Cruiserweight title. I got a feeling the Bruiserweight is coming down here to cast some bad intentions over this matchup, and JD is not too happy about it. 
Well, unless the referee says otherwise, Butch is all and welcomed here at ringside. And this matchup is going to go off without a hitch, at least for now. The Cruiserweight Championship is on the line. J.D. McDonough and Tyler Bate kicking things off live in Vancouver, B.C. Tyler Bate defeated J.D. McDonough back in July in London, England. And Money in the Bank to become the Cruiserweight Champion. And ever since then, as we mentioned just a few moments ago, Tyler has found himself wedged between JD and Butch, two men who have got their eyes on the championship. JD McDonough was hell-bent, dare I say obsessed, with winning the Cruiserweight title in the back half of last year and bleeding into 2024, eventually was able to capture the gold, taking down Ilya Dragunov in the last man standing matchup back in the month of May. Physical war between those two men. J.D. McDonough certainly the biggest feather in his cap thus far in his career. But now he is looking to get back to the promised land. And that could be right here tonight on SmackDown. Other bait came out hot off the opening bell. Tried to take advantage of what was clearly a distracted J.D. With the appearance of Butch at ringside. And there's Tyler Bate once again. Springboard elbow. Down goes the challenger. Tyler has done this song and dance with JD before. He knows that he's got what it takes somewhere deep within him to outlast whatever the Irish Devil is going to push forward. But can he do it again tonight? Will Lightning strike twice in this highly anticipated Money in the Bank rematch? All remains to be seen, as you saw, still to come tonight. Six-man tag team action. Has got a lot of momentum riding on the line as we are just one week and change away from Bobby Lashley and Randy Orton's one-on-one -on -one contest at No Mercy. Of course, two first-round matches, the final first-round matches in the Queen of the Ring tournament taking place right here tonight and so much more here on SmackDown. Tyler Bate, they don't call him the big strong boy for nothing, just manhandled J.D. McDonough, sent him flying over the top rope. Tyler Bate may fit the size and build of the cruiserweight division, but there is some deep physical strength, brute strength, if that, down within the cruiserweight champion as J.D. McDonough creates some distance. McDonough's obsession with becoming the cruiserweight champion all over again leads him to another opportunity tonight. McDonough would not allow anyone to be a true victor when Tyler Bate defended the title against Butch several weeks ago. JD wants the attention all on him. These two men just ragged on each other around ringside here. Nothing fancy about it. Certainly physical. The action already dangerous in between the ropes. Now you take things to ringside. You're just creating that much more of an equation for disaster. There's Tyler set to the corner once more, and J.D. McDonough, I believe, is staring right into the eyes of the Bruiserweight Butch. J.D. better keep his attention focused on this Cruiserweight Championship matchup. Nice suplex there by the Irish Ace as Tyler Bates just tries to shake off the cobwebs here, and here we go. Things breaking, thing, breaking down excuse me, into a brawl. J.D. getting the best of it. Wait a minute, the Bruiser Wayne coming into the ring and taking out J.D. McDonough. Well, you had to expect this. After J.D. spoiled Butch's opportunity to become Cruiserweight Champion last month, Butch now returning the favor. And remember what happened just two weeks ago on SmackDown. J.D. McDonough exposing the turnbuckle. Butch sent right into the steel. J.D. stole a victory from the Bruiser Wayne. We are after this matchup now, ladies and gentlemen. McDonough technically going to win this by disqualification. The title going to stay with Tyler Bate. But I don't think referee John Cohen or anybody in that locker room can get between these two individuals. Things are breaking down with a brawl here in British Columbia. J.D. McDonough, he may be the Irish ace, but I think he forgot to read the rest of the deck because anybody with eyes could have saw Butch coming from a mile away. Well, J.D.'s just trying to get the hell out of Dodge. He knows he's got a pissed-off bruiserweight on his tail. J.D., you're not going to like the view if you turn around. Things are headed into the WWE Universe in the midst of Rogers Arena. Tyler Bate has made his way back to the locker room. This doesn't concern him anymore. Things are getting personal between the Irish Ace and the bruiserweight here on Friday Night SmackDown. We got to get some help out here. We might have to empty the locker room to get these two men apart. J.D. McDonough has got under the skin of Butch, and Butch was not going to sit idly by and watch J.D. possibly win back the Cruiserweight Championship tonight. 
These guys are surrounded by nothing but concrete. This is not good as Butch is throwing haymakers. And JD is going to feel that one on Saturday morning. Oh, headbutt. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Saito right on the concrete. We need some help out here. Butch is laid out and possibly knocked out cold. Last year, 16 of WWE's best cruiserweights clashed in an eight-week tournament to decide who stood above the rest at 205 pounds and under. This year, we do it all over again. Sunday afternoons at 12 p.m. Eastern time, kicking off on September the 29th, 16 men representing SmackDown, NXT, and TNA Wrestling will participate in the 2024 edition of the Cruiserweight Classic. With the field more wide open than ever before, who will scratch and claw their way to greatness and be crowned the winner of the historic Cruiserweight Classic? And as the queen of the ring first round is set to come to an end here tonight, let us take a look at who has advanced thus far. From Monday Night Raw, Liv Morgan, Piper Niven, Bailey, and Tiffany Stratton. As for SmackDown, Blair Davenport, as well as former women's world champion, Raquel Rodriguez. Still two more spots in the quarterfinals to be determined. Who is going to make their way right here tonight? Business has picked up in Vancouver. And from Austin, Texas, Jordan Grace. For the first time on either Monday Night Roll or Friday Night SmackDown, a TNA knockout is making their way to the squared circle. Former knockouts champion, this is Jordan Grace. They call her big mama pump, muscle mommy if that. And Jordan Grace is looking to make an impact right here on SmackDown. I'll tell you what, Indy Hartwell, an incredible talent, but she has certainly got her work cut out for her tonight. A huge opportunity for Jordan Grace, a part of the TNA wrestling roster, but getting an opportunity in the WWE Queen of the Ring Tournament. This is a first round matchup. The winner of this contest will move on to take on Raquel Rodriguez next Friday night here on SmackDown in Montreal. A bell has sounded, we are underway. Indy Hartwell realizing that she is gonna have to put her nose to the grindstone in this matchup and get to work. Big boot right out of the get go. Indy has got the height advantage over Jordan Grace. Jordan certainly, if you know anything about this woman, has got the power and the strength on her side. There's a reason Jordan has made waves all around the globe, especially in TNA wrestling, but can she hang with some of the best in the world here on Friday Night SmackDown? Remains to be seen. Nice reversal that time. Both of these women, as we mentioned, looking to make their way to the quarterfinals. Indy Hartwell damn near sent back to the locker room off that Irish whip. That is the power being shown as Jordan Grace just trying to get her wits about her in the first few moments of this contest. Of course, TNA Wrestling Superstars also set to be a part of the Cruiserweight Classic that is going to kick off at the end of September. But an opportunity arising for the women as well. And Indy Hartwell almost taken out in the first few moments of this matchup. But still some fight left in her. Indy Hartwell has earned the nickname of Simply Impressive over her time here on SmackDown. Former Women's Tag Team Champion alongside Candice LeRae. Let's see if any of that is going to do her any good tonight as Jordan is really starting to take over. Nice senton. Indy Hartwell came out hot after the bell, but she is looking worse for wear right now. Jordan Grace all over her opponent. Indy Hartwell just trying to create some distance. The Queen of the Ring has seen some great contests thus far, and already we are seeing another one. There's the distance that Indy won it in a beautiful springboard drop kick. 
into the cover, dead center of the ring. Jordan getting a huge opportunity tonight. She is not looking to see it slip right through her fingers. Indy Hartwell has got the momentum on her side at the current moment. She has just got to keep it on her side. Easier said than done. Jordan going for a shoulder block, didn't get all of it. Nice sidestep by Hartwell. Thinking on her feet. And although Jordan Grace may be known as the powerhouse in this equation, Indy finding an opportunity to get her on her shoulders and drop her right on the top rope. Indy Hartwell does not need to get fancy. That springboard drop kick a few moments ago was excellent, but she can keep things real basic and just let that offense stack one after another. If she's got to beat down Jordan Grace the long way to try to pick up the victory tonight, then so be it. A win is a win. Obviously easier said than done. Nice reversal that time by her TNA representative in the queen of the ring, and she gets all the shoulder block that time. Indy Hartwell looking a little bit rocked. Jordan's got her on her shoulders. Could be going for a variation. Damn near a juggernaut driver, if you want to call it that. Oh, but Indy Hartwell still alive. Massive close call. I think Jordan thought she had it that time, but Indy Hartwell hasn't earned her spot on Friday Night SmackDown for being lackadaisical inside of that ring. But if the matchup progresses, Jordan saying, so be it, I'll continue to fight. German suplex that time on the much taller Indy Hartwell. That's a lot of body to get over your shoulders, and she does it again, folding Indy up like an accordion. And now what has Grace got in mind? Hold on here. I'm gonna talk about getting folded up like an accordion, going for a Verna breaker on Indy Hartwell. Jordan Grace into the cover. Welcome to Friday Night SmackDown. She's moving on in the queen of the ring. What a hell of a contest. Indy Hartwell giving it her best, but the juggernaut, Jordan Grace, punches her ticket. Here is your winner, Jordan Grace. The TNA representative in the inaugural queen of the ring tournament making an impact here on Friday Night SmackDown. And we now know the first of two quarterfinal matches that are gonna be going down in Montreal next Friday night. Former Women's World Champion Raquel Rodriguez is gonna have her hands full, one on one for the first time ever with Jordan Grace. But who is gonna meet Blair Davenport? We find out right now. The queen of the ring, first round comes to an end. Alexa Bliss meets the ballsy badass Shotzi. Who's moving on? We find out up next. September the 21st in Madison Square Garden, New York City. And of course the semifinals as well as the all important Queen of the Ring finals will go down live on that night. And an opportunity for one of these women to start their path to wearing the crown. The ballsy badass Shotzi knows a thing or two about being a champion. Former women's tag team champion, two time former WWE women's champion, but it's been a few years since Shotzi has been able to call herself the champ. The head honcho of the women's division. Winning the queen of the ring certainly puts you on the right path to doing so all over again. <laughs> Here we go. This is your final first round matchup in the queen of the ring tournament. We have seen some great action across Raw and SmackDown over the last few weeks. 
Of course, the quarterfinals kick off this coming Monday night. Liv Morgan set to go one-on-one -on -one with Piper and Ivan. Bailey, of course, going one-on-one -on -one with the center of the universe, Tiffany Stratton. As we just found out moments ago, Jordan Grace from TNA Wrestling set the battle. Raquel Rodriguez next Friday in Montreal. And either one, one of these women, whether it's Alexa Bliss or Shotzi, will meet Blair Davenport, who survived a very physical matchup with Tegan Knox last week. Alexa Bliss just returning to Friday Night SmackDown a number of weeks ago, teamed up with the Women's World Champion Roxanne Perez. Unsuccessful outing for those two women. A loss that awarded the LWO's first lady, Zelina Vega, a contest against the champion come Queen of the Ring. Now Alexa Bliss looks to get back into the winning ways tonight. First singles matchup upon her return. Shotzi, of course, had a little bit of a roller coaster first half of the year, trading matchups with the former women's world champion Raquel Rodriguez. Not seeing a lot of success. Now Shotzi back in action here tonight as well. Of course, the winner of the Queen of the Ring not only will etch their name in the annals of history as the inaugural winner wearing the crown on the 21st of September, but the winner of the tournament will earn themselves a championship opportunity this November at Survivor Series. All of these women looking for that oh-so-big opportunity, and now Alexa coming off the middle buckle. Pair of knees making a dose. And will that be all she wrote? Is the goddess moving on? Not just yet. There's one thing we know about Shotzi is she isn't afraid of a little bit of physical combat. Not afraid to withstand some punishment. And if Shotzi has got to meet Alexa Bliss in deep waters and simply out-tough her in this contest, well, Shotzi's going to do it. Face first off the canvas she goes. Alexa Bliss received a call from the Women's World Champion Roxanne Perez a few weeks ago in her hometown of Columbus, Ohio. She came answering. I don't think that was out of friendship. I think that was out of opportunity, and Alexa Bliss is looking for hers. The tag team matchup did not go their way. And if Shotzi has her chance here tonight, I don't think this is going to go Alexa's way either. Massive knee to the corner. Bliss has got to be seeing stars after that. Dropping an elbow again. Bliss is looking in trouble. Now Shotzi looking for the exclamation point. Beautiful agility being shown. And Alexa Bliss getting the shoulder off. Like Shotzi or not, great effort off that maneuver. That's a three count almost any day of the week. But not tonight as Alexa Bliss continues to fight. Creates a little bit of separation that time. Kick right to the jugular. And now Bliss with a DDT. Spiking Shotzi right on her spikes. And that'll be all she wrote for the first round of the Queen of the Ring Tournament. An unsuccessful return two weeks ago, but back in singles action tonight, the goddess is on top. And we now have a complete quarterfinal round across Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. Next week in Montreal, the goddess Alexa Bliss, one-on-one -on -one with the cold and dangerous Blair Davenport for the first time ever. And speaking of first-time encounters, TNA Knockout, Jordan Grace, one-on-one -on -one with Raquel Rodriguez. This is going to be a powerful meeting between these two juggernauts next week in the quarterfinals. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast-paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle. Coming your way, exclusively, each and every Wednesday, only on the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. Competition at an all-time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code. Follow on TikTok and don't miss a second of Velocity.
And it was this past Wednesday on Velocity that the LWO Santos Escobar took on one half of the WWE Tag Team Champions, Angel. Of course, this is ahead of the Tag Team Championship matchup tomorrow night at WWE Live for channel members. Santos Escobar able to pick up a huge victory over one half of the Tag Team Champions, but the unfortunate story here is what happened on the other side of the bell. Santos Escobar's celebration spoiled as Alidolo Andrade entered the squared circle and issued a physical beatdown on the Emperor of Lucha Libre. We can confirm that Santos Escobar is dealing with bruised ribs coming out of the attack from Andrade with this steel chair that you are seeing right here. But Santos Escobar has promised that no matter the injuries, he will be in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada tomorrow night to team up alongside Rey Mysterio as they contest Angel and Humberto in a WWE Tag Team Championship rematch live tomorrow night for No NH in Gaming channel members. Well, it was last week here on SmackDown, the United States champion Carmelo Hayes picked up a huge victory over Wes Lee. But what happened after the bell was the emergence of Imperium's Ludwig Kaiser, seemingly calling his shot that he wanted Carmelo Hayes. Wait a minute! Ludwig Kaiser ambushing Melo in the aisle way. Well, Melo planned to call out Kaiser for in-ring competition tonight on SmackDown, and it looks like Kaiser has got a different idea. Well, as we were mentioning, Kaiser made his way out to the stage last week, seemingly calling his shot that he wanted an opportunity at Carmelo Hayes United States Championship. Melo not turning away the challenge, wanted to battle Kaiser here tonight. But Ludwig Kaiser is looking to send a message instead. Melo did not see this coming. Oh no, not at ringside. Melo dropped with a DDT. Imperium's devilish Ludwig Kaiser sending an emphatic message that he wants the prestigious gold that Carmelo Hayes currently houses. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Nomination Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. We are back inside Rogers Arena here in Vancouver, British Columbia. The first lady of the LWO has got a date with Destiny coming up on the 21st of September. One on one with the women she pinned inside that squared circle and tag team action just a few weeks ago. The prodigy Roxanne Perez cannot be happy that Selena Vega has been walking around basically with the number of Perez in her back pocket. Will Vega become the women's world champion? We're gonna find that out in the middle of New York City on the 21st. Here tonight on SmackDown, Vega with another chance to build some momentum as she is one on one with the poison pixie, Candice LeRae. Candice LeRae's normal tag team partner, Indy Hartwell, in action earlier tonight did not go her way. She was knocked off by TNA knockout Jordan Grace, who will meet Raquel Rodriguez in the quarterfinals of the Queen of the Ring tournament next Friday night in Montreal. Right now, Selena Vega with her eyes, of course, set 
on the 21st in Madison Square Garden in New York City, the backyard of Selena Vega, born and raised. She's going to go one-on-one -on -one with Roxanne Perez for the Women's World Championship. Vega with a very sentimental matchup. Coming up at Queen of the Ring, but Candice LeRae not interested in Vega's affairs. Looking to kickstart some momentum for herself here on SmackDown. As we say each and every week, it can be any given week that you can turn your momentum around and really start down a brand new path. That is what LeRae is looking to do here tonight. Certainly been an action-packed night here in Rogers Arena. Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada here on SmackDown thus far. Still a massive six-man tag team main event to come. Selena Vega put on top, trying to fight out of a disastrous position. Candice LeRae, obviously, with her own ideas, looking to leave no stone unturned. We talked about trying to set down a new path tonight. Candice LeRae willing to stop at anything. Down goes Vega off of Poison Rana. Zelina Vega wiped out momentarily. Candice LeRae trying to sneak a victory, not just yet. And now Vega from behind. Oh man, almost like a dragon sleeper variation. I think Vega may realize that she's not gonna get the victory dead center of the ring, but just an opportunity to slow down Candice. Candice LeRae extremely motivated, but so is the number one contender to the women's world title, Code Red. Zelina Vega looking like a, oh wait a minute, primed and ready, number one contender, but the women's world champion Roxanne Perez does not give a damn. Vega may have Perez's number, but the prodigy is looking to change the story on the 21st. Coming your way on Saturday night, September 14th, Witness the aftermath of the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam, as WWE and Noah Nation Gaming channel memberships proudly present No Mercy. No Mercy comes to you live from the Bell Center in Montreal, Quebec, Canada at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss championship flashes, personal battles, high stakes, and high rewards. All on the line on the 14th of September at WWE No Mercy. No mercy now. Ever since the month of July, we have seen a very different and a very dangerous version of the Scottish warrior Drew McIntyre taking out Ilya Dragunov. Superstars like Tyler Bate and even the current World Heavyweight Champion Cody Rhodes trying to play defender. But McIntyre got what he wanted when he took down the Mad Dragon at SummerSlam. The same night Cody Rhodes toppled the Ring General Gunther and became World Heavyweight Champion. But the target has been very clear ever since. McIntyre has got his eyes on the championship he once held for 267 days. We saw what happened last week on SmackDown. The brawl ensuing throughout the arena between the current champion and the Scottish Warrior. And as confirmed yesterday afternoon, this collision course is on its way to the Bell Center next Saturday night. McIntyre gets his wish, a go around with the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. SmackDown's richest prize, the heavyweight championship of the world is on the line. And what else is going down at No Mercy? Let's take a closer look, courtesy of Monday Night Raw. The warpath that the authors of Pain and Carry and Cross have fit on brings them to a meeting with the Wolf Dogs, Braun Breaker, and Baron Corbin. The WWE Championship is up for grabs in a triple threat matchup. LA Knight, AJ Styles. Things went to a double count out a few weeks ago. Both of them are moving on to settle a score with CM Punk in hopes to obtain championship gold. It has been damn near a year long battle between the Usos and the Judgment Day. And everything comes to a head when the World Tag Team titles are up for grabs in a matchup where the Usos jobs on Raw are also on the line. TLC next Saturday night. 
And of course, from Friday Night Smackdown, the almighty Bobby Lashley is in search of retribution as he goes one-on-one -on -one with the man who sidelined him back in July, the apex predator Randy Orton. One on one, we saw the destruction at the hands of the Almighty a few weeks ago when he made his return. Randy Orton better have a game plan because Lashley is coming for war at no mercy. But that is coming up one week from tomorrow in Montreal. But tonight, SmackDown emanates from Vancouver and we got a six man tag team main event on hand. Randy Orton's 2024 has been about reminding the WWE Universe as well as the superstars in the locker room just how dangerous he can be. And Orton cannot be in a good mood over the last few weeks. Coming up short to The Rock in that first time ever matchup at SummerSlam. Days later, the reemergence of the almighty Bobby Lashley. And now knowing that a one-on-one -on -one encounter with a man who had his number back in the spring, Bobby Lashley himself is coming up one week from tomorrow. Well, Bobby Lashley, or shall I say Randy Orton, made his bed. Now he's got to sleep in it. The demons of the past, if you will, coming back to haunt the Apex Predator. Randy Orton going to have to deal with the repercussions. One-on-one -on -one with Lashley at no mercy. But tonight, he stands alongside two men who have been his recent running buddies at Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. They battle Angelo Dawkins, Montez Ford, and Bobby Lashley in a six-man tag team main event. Up next, here on SmackDown. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a No Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. We're back live inside Rogers Arena, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Just over one week from our trip to Montreal for no mercy. Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford with their own score to settle with a town down under in the midst of this six-man tag team main event. But for the first time since the month of July, the almighty is in action here on SmackDown. You know, Bobby Lashley has done a lot of great things in this industry. This is a former WWE champion, former United States champion. Hell, he was once the ECW champion. But come no mercy, it is not about championship gold. It is about payback. Bobby Lashley defeated Randy Orton several months ago, derailed the momentum, at least in the mind, of the Apex Predator. Orton was out to get Lashley ever since that night. Lashley went one-on-one -on -one with Austin Theory back in July in London, England. The match went A-wire thanks to an attack by Orton and an RKO in the concrete floor sidelined Lashley for weeks up until he re-emerged two weeks ago. Lashley dropped Randy Orton in the backstage area, drug his carcass out to the arena, and put him down with two more spears. You gotta believe that was only an inch of the mile that Lashley is gonna be willing to travel at no mercy to get his revenge. All remains to be seen what is gonna happen one week from tomorrow, and of course the WWE live event going down tomorrow in Edmonton, Alberta at Rogers Place. 
For No Nation Gaming channel members only, hit the join button down below or the link up in the cards and don't miss any of the action that is currently going down on the bottom left of your screen. So much action already signed and more to be determined tomorrow night at WWE Live. Right now, Randy Orton and Angelo Dawkins inside the squared circle. At least they were momentarily. There's a tag to the Aussie icon, Grayson Waller. Dawkins has got his own score to settle with everybody on the opposite side of the ring. He fell short to Orton in a one-on-one -on -one contest last month here on SmackDown. And the Street Profits falling short to A-Town down under in a SmackDown main event as of late as well. Dawkins, Ford, and Lashley all looking for their pound of flesh. Meanwhile, Lashley getting his hands a little bit dirty, knocking Grayson Waller right off the apron. Certainly don't feel bad about seeing Lashley and the Profits maybe bend the rules a little bit that time, because look at the other three men that they're opposing. Theory, Waller, and Orton have made careers about bending the rules. And I got a feeling they're not going to stop here tonight. Tag back to the Apex Predator, Randy Orton, as this six-man tag team main event progresses. Oh, there's a cheap shot by Orton. Well, there you go. I guess it's all eye for an eye. Lashley took out Waller. Orton with a shot on Lashley. Now Orton going after Angelo Dawkins. It was a few weeks ago. An A-Town down under was up against the LWO. Number one contenders matchup for the WWE Tag Team titles. Of course, the return of Bobby Lashley, which started in the backstage area. That ambush on Randy Orton. Took the eye off the ball of Austin Theory and Grayson Waller, and it was all downhill from there. A-Town down under could have been the ones challenging for the tag team titles tomorrow night, but to the victor go the spoils. Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar, regardless of any prior injuries, will be in the ring tomorrow night with Angel Inberto. Meanwhile, Randy Orton bringing Angelo Dawkins into enemy territory. And if Orton and A-Town down under have their way, they're going to wrestle this matchup on the opposite side of the ring and keep any man, in this case AD, away from his partners. You hate to see it, but you can't say it isn't sound strategy from the veteran, the future Hall of Famer, Randy Orton. And I am sure a man who is spilling his knowledge onto the young and impressionable Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. No slouches themselves. The SmackDown Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic winners earlier this year. Former Tag Team Champions as well. Some spoils that Dawkins and Ford would love to hold. In enemy territory, tag made to Montez Ford. The Street Profits now. Looking to do what they do best. Little double team action on Randy Orton. Orton's going to be feeling that one on Saturday morning. And if things continue, he's going to be feeling that one in the midst of combat with Bobby Lashley next Saturday night. Tag made to Theory. Orton getting the hell out of a dodge from a clearly game Montez Ford. I don't know if Montez realizes that Theory made the tag until now. Around and around he goes. Montez Ford crashing and burning on the canvas. So much action coming your way in the month of September. Of course, WWE Live tomorrow night. No mercy next Saturday. Queen of the Ring two weeks from tomorrow, three weeks from Sunday. The Cruiserweight Classic Tournament kicking off. Great time to become a No Nation Gaming channel member. You can do so with the join button down below as Austin Theory continues to pumble Montez Ford in the midst of this tag team main event. In the midst of our Canadian tour over the last couple of weeks, we've been in front of some great crowds. Vancouver, British Columbia has been hot all night. And certainly they are getting a treat. For this all-star lineup main event. Now Montez Ford battling out of the corner, taking down the Aussie icon. It was Grayson Waller who secured pinfall in that tag team matchup between eight town down under in the Street Profits last month. And I'm sure Montez Ford has not forgotten. Just slapped the taste out of Waller's mouth. And Grayson Waller dropped with the back body. Man, don't discount Montez Ford inside of that ring. This guy is a fighter. Once again, Waller sent to the corner. Montez Ford clearly with a game plan here. Look at the explosivity as Grayson Waller is looking up at the lights. Randy Orton not going to allow a three. 
As long as Orton is on the sole of his boots, I don't expect it is gonna be a fair fight. But there is the tag to the almighty Bobby Lashley, seeing his first in-ring competition since the month of July. And whether it's Grayson Waller or Austin Theory, Randy Orton, wait a minute, hold that thought. Waller trying to steal the victory, not just yet. Whether it's Waller or Theory inside of that ring, Randy Orton getting a first class ticket to what awaits him at no mercy. Tag made to Orton. And here we go. A little bit of a preview just a week away from their one on one encounter. Randy Orton defeated Bobby Lashley via count out back in the spring. Lashley wanted a rematch. He pinned Randy Orton's shoulders to the canvas just a few weeks later, and it has evolved into this bitter rivalry ever since. Lashley and Orton going at it here, trying to feel each other out before no mercy. Orton may regret receiving that tag. Press slam by a very motivated Lashley. Orton sent into the corner, not by will, but by force, in retreat. Bobby Lashley looks great. Bobby Lashley looks motivated. Revenge and retribution on the mind, and tonight he's getting a measure of it as he sends Randy Orton across the ring. I'll tell you what, no matter what happens at No Mercy, Orton's gonna be feeling the effects of this brutal attack. Dominator to the Viper. Cutting the head off the snake. Would have gotten the victory that time if it weren't for the Aussie icon. But nonetheless, the matchup progresses and so does the beatdown that Bobby Lashley is gonna institute on Orton. There's been a roller coaster action packed night here on SmackDown. All roads leading to Montreal. Of course, next Friday, we will also be inside the Bell Center, the home of No Mercy, already signed. Two quarterfinal matches in the Queen of the Ring tournament. Alexa Bliss has to go one on one with Blair Davenport. TNA knocked out Jordan Grace, set to battle Raquel Rodriguez next Friday night on SmackDown. Tag back to the Aussie icon, Grayson Waller. And I don't know if Grayson Waller's an idiot or what, but Bobby Lashley clearly seeing that he just exposed the corner. Lashley tried to go for the spear. Waller went for a big boot, and it didn't work out for either of them. Grayson Waller may be talented, but never been proven to be the smartest, or dare I say, sharpest tool in the shed. Nonetheless, Bobby Lashley has been neutralized, at least momentarily. This is Lashley's first contest since the month of July when he went one-on-one -on -one with Austin Theory on SmackDown. You never know if there may be any ring rust for the Almighty. Has looked good. That may have just been aggression against the Apex Predator, Randy Orton, and not necessarily the skill set that it takes to secure victory. Lashley to the corner, going for a spear. Waller sidesteps him again. Lashley hell-bent on cutting Grayson in half. Lashley down the one of the ropes. Oh, man, big-time counter. These men, eye for an eye, tit for tat off the reversals. Lashley could have been going for the hurt lock. Grayson Waller now with another counter. Once again, sending Lashley to the ropes. Going for that pop-up stutter, but Lashley reversed again. Lashley now sees where he is, has got his eyes on Randy Orton. Grayson Waller taking advantage of Lashley's misstep. Lashley cannot afford to see red tonight. Has to realize that although tonight is a measure of it, one-on-one -on -one at no mercy is where he can get his revenge on Randy Orton. Tonight is about momentum and victory. Lashley's will to try to get his hands on the Apex Predator nearly costed him that time. And a tag made to the man from A-Town, Austin Theory. Austin Theory. Now pick it up where they left off back in London, England. Two months ago, dropping Lashley right on his knee. Montez Ford breaking things up. The Street Profits not looking to fall short to A-Town down under as well as the Apex Predator yet again here on SmackDown. Counter by Lashley, motivated as all hell. Down goes Waller. Once again, Lashley cannot afford to keep his eyes on the illegal competitor. Needs to focus on the task at hand. Austin Theory takes advantage. 
Bobby Lashley in need of a tag, and he makes one to the big AD. Angelo Dawkins who explodes into the ring, and Randy Orton gets sent down. Angelo Dawkins looking to call game right here. Unloading on Orton, maybe not. Other reversal that time. Back and forth, these two men are trading blows. Another tag made to Theory. Angelo Dawkins now trying to take advantage, but he is in enemy territory, unfortunately for him. Dawkins, wait a minute, took a shot at Orton. So much action going on in this corner right now, and Angelo Dawkins, unfortunately, is on the receiving end of it. Oh, wait a minute, Montez Ford, I don't think he's going to stand idly by. Ford taking out Austin Theory. My goodness gracious. Action-packed night on SmackDown and an action-packed main event here in Vancouver. Ford sending Theory back inside the ring. Right into the waiting arms of Angelo Dawkins. The powerhouse of the Street Profits. Dawkins set to the ropes and a counter by Theory. And one more time into the pinfall. Will that do it? Not just yet. This has been an exciting main event here in Rogers Arena in Vancouver. Angelo Dawkins wants a tag, but Austin Theory has drawn a line in the sand and not looking to see Dawkins cross it. Once again, Austin Theory sending Dawkins into enemy territory. How many times have those three men... Oh my goodness! Tried to cut off the ring. Angelo Dawkins, however, just sent Theory for a massive amusement park ride. And a tag made to Montez Ford, who's got jet fuel underneath his feet, going after Austin Theory now. We have got a barn burner on our hands here in Vancouver, BC. Tornado DDT, Theory looking like spaghetti. From the heavens! Here we go, Randy Orton, however, spoiling the fun. Theory reversal. Sneaky pinfall, not just yet. Down goes Theory again. Montez Ford ever explosive. Tag made to the almighty Bobby Lashley. Boot right for Theory's troubles. Down goes Orton. Down goes Waller, not just yet. Waller off the reversal. Might have just pissed off the almighty. Theory in prime position. Spear by Lashley. Huge victory for Lashley and the Street Profits. What a six-man tag team clinic here on SmackDown. Revenge will be on the mind of Lashley come no mercy, but tonight he got a measure of it. A-Town down under and Randy Orton falling short of the finish line. A huge and satisfying victory, I gotta believe, for Angelo Dawkins, Montez Ford, and Bobby Lashley. But all roads lead to Montreal, where we will be next Friday night on SmackDown. And of course, one week from tomorrow, all bets are off at no mercy.